The politics of the fallout from the big explosive story out of Washington, D.C. Wednesday is that it could be a very, very bad uh, news for House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. Boo-hoo. But the real fallout is that it's very, very bad for the future of American democracy, since it provides even more evidence that, once again, the GOP put party ahead of country. I'm talking, of course, about the new secret audio tapes leaked to and released by the New York Times, in which McCarthy expresses concern immediately after the 1-6 attack on the Capitol, that some far-right Republicans could incite even more violence. Let's listen first to McCarthy calling out certain members of his caucus. The other thing that we have to do is these members on either whatever position you are, calling out other members, that stuff's got to stop. Tension is too high. The country is too crazy. I do not want to look back and think we caused something or we missed something and someone got hurt. Um, I don't want to play politics with any of that. At the time, the Republican leader of the House was so worried about the far-right fringe of his caucus that he named names while talking to his close colleague, Steve, Steve Scalise. I just got something sent now about Newsmax, something Matt Gates said, where he's calling people's names out, saying an anti-Trump in this type of uh, atmosphere um, in some of the other places. This is, this is serious stuff people are doing that has to stop. So, and, uh, in Louis' comments, too, a lot of members have said some real they're concerning they're things. And it's potentially illegal what he's doing. He's putting people in jeopardy. And he, he doesn't need to be doing this. It's, we, we saw what people would do in the Capitol. Um, you know, at least people came prepared with, with rope, with everything else. Hmm. Potentially illegal? We're going to come back to that. And what about Congressman Mo Brooks? McCarthy also singled out the Alabama conservative for his actions on 1-6. You'll recall that Brooks urged a rally of Trump supporters to, quote, fight like hell before they marched to the Capitol. You think the president deserves to be impeached for his comment? That's almost like he goes further than the president said. As a result of these audio tapes, Chairman Benny Thompson says the committee is looking at summoning a wider group of House Republicans to testify. It's hard to believe the 1-6 committee didn't connect the dots on that already. Thompson also says that they are redoubling their efforts to get McCarthy to testify, deciding on whether to issue a second request after the House Republican leader all but scoffed at the first. But the true gem of these leaked audio tapes, the piece de resistance, the chef's kiss, is Kevin McCarthy's kumbaya moment. Take a listen. Later after this call, I'm gonna get another briefing from the FBI. When we say a member's name, when we incite or we, in our hearts, maybe we think we aren't doing it. This is not the moment in time to do it. Watch our words closely. Do not raise another member's name on a television. And I'm just warning you right now, don't do it. No, oh, it's a shame, really, because by now, 15 months later, we know that Republicans in Congress did unify, but they unified behind Donald Trump. They voted almost entirely in lockstep, McCarthy and Scalise included, not to impeach Donald Trump for inciting the attack on the Capitol. These audio recordings are a bombshell because Kevin McCarthy did not do the right thing in the end. His crisis of conscience was only a brief moment, just a mere blip. Matt Gates released a statement calling McCarthy and Scalise sniveling and weak. Gates says it's because they disparaged lawmakers who fight for Trump. But if Gates is right, the true weakness displayed by Kevin McCarthy is that he really failed to fight for his country. Joining me now is Congressman Eric Swalwell, Democrat of California. He was an impeachment manager for the second impeachment trial of President Donald Trump for inciting the deadly attack on the Capitol. Congressman, if you had actually had these recordings at the time of the second impeachment, do you think they might have changed the outcome and actually kept Republican leadership from drifting back in line behind Donald Trump? Uh, J.D., it certainly would have helped uh, to have these recordings. And, and there was nothing that stopped Kevin McCarthy or others uh, on those recordings from coming forward and giving us information. We were certainly ready to receive them. What we were told, though, uh, from most individuals was that they would have to, they would take us to court. They did not want to cooperate. They didn't want to help their country understand how this insurrection occurred. And so Kevin McCarthy had a brief 
affair with integrity, but he's gotten back together with the lies about the election. And we'd all be better off if that affair had ha lasted a little bit longer, uh, because where we are today uh, is the same combustible environment that we were in, almost worse uh, than right up before January 6th. And, and what really concerns me now is that Kevin McCarthy wants to be Speaker of the House. We're not going to let that happen. We have no intention of losing the midterms. But he wants to be. And that means for America, if that were to occur, there's no backstop, no insurance policy against Donald Trump essentially being the Speaker of the House. Well, yeah, listen, because you can't really count on them to actually use their conscience to be that backstop you talk about. But you mentioned the midterms. Congressman, do these McCarthy audio recordings change anything now in terms of strategy for the Democrats? Look, elections are about uh, A versus B, right? It's about what did you deliver as a party? And for Democrats, we're going to show that we're pulling the country out of COVID. We're getting kids back in schools, uh, people back in pews for their churches and synagogues and mosques, America back to work. And then restaurants are back open because of the restaurant grant. Infrastructure dollars are out there connecting the disconnected. The first black woman will take a seat on the Supreme Court so the court looks like America. We are delivering. Republicans are dividing. They're dividing us over banning books, telling you that your kid is not allowed to be gay, suggesting that interracial marriages should not be allowed. And by the way, they are tough on Mickey Mouse and soft on Russia, tough on doctors, tough on making sure that, you know, their culture wars persist, but soft on making sure that insurrectionists uh, are not able uh, to again take over the Capitol. So that's what the election is going to be about. And if we can make that case, uh, I, I'm confident we will govern again in America. So we heard Steve Scalise tell McCarthy that some of the rhetoric being expressed by people like Matt Gates was, quote, potentially illegal. I want you to put your former prosecutor hat back on for a moment as I ask you the following question. Is Scalise right? Yes. Uh, what Gates was doing what was suggesting and putting out the, an enemies list, essentially knowing how combustible, you know, the country was uh, at that time, knowing that insurrectionists had already come to the Capitol armed to the teeth. Uh, you know, to take out uh, America's leaders, hanging Mike Pence, killing Nancy Pelosi. And, and Gates was, you know, trying to identify Liz Cheney uh, as a traitor. And, and so he himself uh, was getting very, very close uh, to inciting. But it's just so concerning that what was expressed privately is not what is expressed publicly today. And for a party that tells everyone that their mantra is America first, they have put America last, and they've put their own self-interest first. Congressman, you've got young children. I've got a little girl. We teach them right from wrong. We say if you lie, you get in trouble. Where's the accountability for all of this? Well, I hope that's what Americans look at uh, this upcoming election, uh, which is that you have one party uh, whose leader is a 24 karat liar in Kevin McCarthy. He has been proven publicly to be a liar. So if he's willing to lie about this, what else is he lying to you about? And, and so, yes, at the earliest of ages, uh, we try and teach our children the difference between a truth and a lie. And so we model behavior as America's leaders. And the behavior that's being modeled uh, by Republicans right now is to put your self-interest ahead of America's interest, and when you're caught, to just lie about it. And that that is, as Hakeem Jeffries said today, a perceived superpower of the Republican Party, is to have no shame and to believe that you can just stack lie on top of lie and that the American people won't care. Turns out they will care. Congressman, quickly, I've only got about a minute left. Uh, we're about 200 days away from the midterms. Um, states are being redrawn in ways, um, redistricted in ways that are favoring the Republicans. What are the Democrats doing to be able to combat this? Uh, we're going to protect our most vulnerable Democrats with what we've delivered on, but we're going to win seats. And in California, I'm biased to California, Quay Corte. Los Angeles County. We lost the seat by 300 votes. He played football at the Naval Academy, Naval Intelligence Officer. He's going to get that seat back from Mike Garcia, who voted for the insurrection. And we're going to win a lot more. 